I'm Karen Sylvester. My name is Benjamin. My name is Carlisle Harris. My name is Rubadiri Victor. I'm a local artist, Trinidad. I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm living and working in Trinidad and Tobago by choice. Uh, there's this anthropological theory. It's the idea that dreaming or myth making is the central act of all civilizations. And the way that that um, actually is enacted in the day to day life is through art, which is the act of people uh, dreaming themselves continuously into existence. A dream uh, contextualizes the entire world for you. It gives you past, present, future. It gives you a point in the future, what you're heading towards. I have always loved landscapes uh, the most. I've painted everything, but I keep coming back to the landscape. Maybe because I'm so attached to it. I grew up for many of years in America. I'm an architect by trade, and coming back to my country, uh, um, I do arts and craft here on the Pigeon Point Road into the Pigeon Point Beach. Uh, what else? I am a painter by practice. I have done design work in metal, jewelry, and textile, fabric, and furniture and set design and costume. I have only been concentrating on painting for the last 15 years, but I certainly would like to do a lot more in the other areas. I'm a multimedia artist, meaning that I do film, television, music, theater, mass. Um, I publish a uh, magazine, I publish other books as well. Um, I write, I'm a full multimedia artist. Well, where do I get my inspiration? I guess you could say from God. <laughs> the thing that made me start the coconut works and all these other things is I got fed up of seeing what other people has on the island. Everyone has the same old cliche kind of thing. Everyone's doing carvings out of wood. Everyone's making things out of shells. So I, I try to be a little bit original, you know. Being an architect, you have a little bit more diverse kind of mental. You see things in a different frame, you know. So I started uh, looking at coconuts a whole different way, put it like that. Uh, my country and the people that live around me. Um, we have such a, a beautiful tropical island. Uh, I don't think I can ever run out of subjects, you know. The people are so warm and versatile and, you know, that I don't need inspiration really coming from any particular source. I just open the windows and there it is. The magazine Generation Lion came about um, out of like a need in the landscape. Um, we in Trinidad and Tobago have a problem in documenting stuff. We haven't been documenting uh, our legacy right across the board, not just in the arts, in all different fields. And um, we kind of reached a, a crisis moment. Um, and so Generation Lion was a kind of response to that phenomenon in the landscape. Um, this is the darkest period, you know. Um, all the traditions are, are collapsing, you know, in terms of, um, in terms of the craft and the standards of excellence. We're losing a lot of special places. We have lost buildings upon buildings of our precious West Indian uh, culture and, and the way we, we build stuff and so on. We've just lost it. So it's important for me now to paint and document these places for even our own people um, who you know, haven't been to certain areas. And maybe that will wake up some people to, to the destruction. Most of the young people then like uh, reinventing the wheel every single time, learning how to write music from scratch, you know, with no template, um, finding their voice all over again, every single generation. It keeps collapsing because each time the generation, the information is further and further away, so that each successive generation has less material for them to build on. Um, and then it's collapsing because the work cannot be sustained. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a gift and expression to really help your community. Uh, everything that you do, everything that you have a gift for, that's why you have the gift in the first place. It's not for self. Um, you live life, you work, and you earn to get things. And then what? You know, 
that way I saw myself enjoying what I'm doing, working hard at it, spreading that around and encouraging others who have a gift to, to do the same and touch the lives of other people. I think the duty of an artist is, is really to be true to themselves. I mean, ultimately, is that you have to be true to the voice, that voice that, that is inside of you, the, the heart, as a writer or as a, a sculptor, as whatever, is to be faithful to the vision or the voice or the thing and bring it forward faithfully. But I'm not going to say that any artist has to um, do anything other than be true to their call. We don't even have artistic communities. And that's a bittersweet kind of thing. If we had a joie de vivre, a greater commingling of, of artists, like minds, all kinds of things would be happening. I'm here working alone. And you'd probably visit another artist who is working alone. And so on and so on and so on. Uh, my name is Courtney Williams. And I'm president of the Art Society of Trinidad and Tobago. The mission of the Art Society is really to improve the quality of awareness of art. This is an opportunity for artists to come together. And that's very, very important because artists feed off of each other. Um, and the community can only be strengthened and, and can only grow if artists become friends with each other. It's very, very important. A good cleansing or clarification of our thoughts and our direction could have come if we were meeting more. As it is, I have no, there's no critique of my work. I work alone and take down the show and people buy or they don't buy. Other artists might come in and say, well, I like what you've done this year or some of that is really bad. I had a friend who just had a show and it was really, really bad and we had to tell him that. Now, he should have benefited from our advice before. I also want to have um, critiques that are professional uh, critiques, you know. We have people who, like when I do my shows, whatever paper is it uh, that, that take up the article and say, okay, we write something on the show. They're not art critics, they just write for the people. So sometimes they give you this awful review. They have no idea what they're doing, you know. They just don't like that painting, so they say, well, this painting was awful or whatever. But you really need professional people. We don't have that. We really don't. I'm um, Rhonda Abraham, and uh, I'm a proprietor. Really, I'm a secretary, but I just saw the need for young artists who had no place to show their work. And because I put myself in their shoes, if I was an artist, what do I do? And uh, so it started very much simply like a little bit of pottery and batik. But the young people just kept coming into the shop and asking to leave their stuff, and so it, this is where it's reached. I remember having a show where this little girl came in. I don't know if you know the name Laventy. Ever heard that place, Laventil? Some people call Laventil. Okay, it's an area in Trinidad that's, that's uh, rich with talent. However, it's, it's what most people conceive to be a trouble area with youths. They're getting into gangs and they're doing a lot of crazy things. And this little girl came to my show from Laventy. Usually you're not going to get a Laventy um, youth to come into an art show. That's something out of, you know. And she came in, she had a little sketch pad and she was writing notes at every painting. So I went and I said, hey. And we started talking and she said, listen, I can't stay long because um, I had to call the police and my aunt. They were fighting with some neighbor or something. But I really wanted to come to the show because I love to paint and what do I do next? 